I've had a wonderful time these last several weeks here in Peru with the Tebby family. When we first arrived, Gary met us at the airport in Lima and traveled with us back to Huanaco. We were quickly initiated to the traffic in Peru. After eating some amazing food that Amelia prepared to welcome us to Wanaco, Gary took us downtown to see the sights and the nightlife of Peru. The next morning, Joel picked us up and we headed to the mountains above Tembillo. Here we are at the ruins of Uxnupunta, uh, at the top of the mountain that overlooks the village of Tambillo. This is an area that uh, is a settlement of a people that were here before the Incas conquered. You had, across the Andes Mountains, little villages and small kingdoms of peoples. And in the, uh, starting in the 1300s on up into the 1500s, the Incas conquered the whole Andes Mountains and incorporated all the little kingdoms into one solid, one single state. You can see what's left. We're actually probably standing up close to the roof and there's a doorway back here. These are the ledges uh, where people lived and died hundreds of years ago. Today, their descendants live in the valleys and on the mountainsides around us. One of the primary purposes of the trip is to make some documentary style promo films for Gary to use with the Christian School of the Andes. So everywhere we went, we filmed the sites. We filmed ourselves seeing the sites. Sometimes, we even filmed ourselves filming the sites. Sometimes what happens in Peru stays in Peru. I am so glad to be able to uh, greet you on behalf, of, on behalf of Living Water Fellowship. God says I have loved you with an everlasting love. Pero Dios dice en su palabra, yo te he amado con amor eterno. Amén. Pero sabe qué, hermanos, a pesar de todo mi cristianismo público, si yo no amo a mi esposa en la casa, then I do not have the fruit of the Spirit. No estoy mostrando el fruto del Espíritu. No tengo el fruto del Espíritu. And Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. I was very encouraged by the church here, just realizing that there are Christians who love God and love their families living here in Peru. And we also saw some examples of multi-generational faith. One of the highlights of the trip for me was seeing the work that's being done by Gary Tebby at Christian School for the Andes. Welcome to the Christian School of the Andes. Let's go inside and see what's happening. The school has affected the girls' lives. You can tell the difference in the way that they treat each other, the way they love the Lord, and the way that they are learning to love education. Currently we have 12 students, 9 middle school and high school age students, and 3 uh, kindergarten age students. Uh, besides my wife and I, we have two full-time teachers that are laboring wonderfully among uh, these children. Casi una isla, y una península parece un dedo pulgar. Levanta tu mano. Todos digan península. Peninsula. Like. Like. <laughs> uh, believe. believe. <laughs> there you go. I have seen God working in this school this week. I have seen him in the hearts of the teachers, in the hearts of Mr. and Mrs. Tebby, and in the hearts of these students. When you're planting trees, you only get the fruit many years in the future. 
And so even though we uh, will very soon see this uh, crop of, of young people graduate from our school, the long-term fruit is what we're looking for. I am so thankful to my teachers who were my Uncle Gary, my Aunt Tamiko, every my family, all my family, helping me in my studies, studies and for encourage me to lead my life in the Lord in the in Jesus. For us success will be God fearing, Christ honoring children who grow up to become men and women who have strong marriages and raise their own children in the love and the fear of God. In the future I want to be a good English teacher, a good translator and a good woman and a good wo mother too. The Christian School of the Andes operates under the license of Springfield College, a local school where Gary teaches English. One thing I especially enjoyed was Springfield School. Gary took us to the Springfield School on several different days. Good morning. Good morning. Students were excited to meet Americans. They were practicing their national dance. Stacy and I decided to join in. The kids there had such a heart and a passion to learn. Write down a question if you want to ask. At Springfield School, we practice English with the students. I told them about the 4th of July, and they told me about their Independence Day, which is 28th of July. The word is sidewalk. Sidewalk. The word is development. Development. Peter was very popular with the students and the teachers. I enjoyed speaking to the students in the churches and the schools. Trying to represent all the We had many opportunities to speak. Every morning while we were there, one of us presented a devotional to the girls at the school. So, as people who fear God, and those who know the Lord, and everybody who follow Jesus, we oftentimes have to make a decision to not go the road that everyone else is going, but to go in the narrow way. We went to speak at a church in the area, Church of God. A lot of us got to share our testimonies. When I was 14, one of my co-workers started asking me questions about what I believed. I saw I fell short when I read his word. Yo me siento I kept that vision in front of me. What does the Lord desire for my life? That night, I didn't know exactly what I was going to say until the last few minutes. 
and was wondering if it was even the best or the right thing to say considering there were going to be so few men there. How do we overcome the wicked ones? And this talk was targeted toward young men. Our faith in that work that he has done is what gives us the victory over the wicked ones. It turned out there were a number of young men there and even one came up af to me afterwards and told me that that was exactly what he needed to hear. It was also encouraging to see how people responded to the gospel and to the, the family information that we gave in a lot of our talks. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. When you're 50 years old, what will your family look like? Como se va ver su familia cuando usted tenga... But the house that was on the sand, when the wind hit it, it fell flat. Pero la casa en la arena, cuando llegaron los vientos, se cayó, se tumbó y se destrozó. Is your house built on the word of God? Ese es el desafío. Tu casa está construida sobre la palabra de Dios. One of the highlights to coming to Peru for me was seeing things that I hadn't seen before. For the ocean, the ocean for example. I seen the Pacific Ocean before I came. It's the first time I've ever seen the Pacific Ocean and it's not quite as big of waves as I was thinking but maybe that's just today. The scenery is breathtaking. Gorgeous scenery. Climbing the mountains. <laughs> Especially when you're climbing a mountain you really get the breathtaking experience. I enjoyed Machu Picchu a lot. Seeing the view. Church services. Time was spent in the jungle. The schools that we were able to talk openly about God. The culture itself. The culture. The geography that's here. Mixed with history. The history is mixed in throughout their entire culture. You can see symbolism to the Incas everywhere. Seeing the different cultures. The death cabs with the third world country traffic. I love the driving here. Weaving in and out, no seatbelts, definitely a ride, kind of like a roller coaster. Going with Joel up those mountain roads when he was driving, actually we got stuck on some of the mountain roads. I enjoyed just experiencing life with my wife and Peter, that was a lot of fun. And the Peruvian food. I love the food. I enjoy the uh, food. That was definitely a good one. Eating some of the food we ate. The food here is amazing. <laughs> Mrs. Tubby sure knows how to cook and we had some awesome food. <laughs> the ceviche. The cocoa tea. The lomo saltado. Lomo saltado is one of their dishes. It's kind of like french fries with meat and vegetables. Food here, incredible. But what impressed me was the creation of God. Everywhere I've been amazed at the creativity of God in the mountains that we've been at, where we were at Machu Picchu, when we were down in the jungle, and there in Wanaco. These two ladies randomly just telling us, well, you better get in line for the bus for Machu Picchu early so that you'll be able to get up there by in time for the sunrise. And sure enough, we get there and there's big lines and we, we got, really got there early enough and the bus is left a half hour early so we're able to film the sunrise. Welcome to the eighth wonder of the world, Machu Picchu. You see the ruins of the Incas and then the beautiful creation around them. 500 years ago, there were people here building this. They lived here, they worked here, this was their home. All that is left are stones upon stones, whereas God's creation is continually magnified and glorified through the wonder of uh, the mountains, the, the peaks. Being here, seeing the rocks they carved, seeing the places they lived, makes me realize that it's only a very short time between the time I live and the time that they lived. It makes the creation seem a lot smaller and eternity a lot bigger. Something else I really, really enjoyed was all the time we spent singing. Incredible to watch these people worship God with their whole heart and it be different from how I worship God. We did a lot of a lot of worshiping. We did a lot of just singing in the car, um, in the living room, even just a couple of us on top of the mountain that we climbed up. It started one night on the way back from Tingo Maria and we were just sitting in a dark car and we decided to sing the entire way back. And that was beautiful. One of my favorite things is to worship with fellow believers and that's what we got to do. And it was so incredible just 
to lift our voices in praise. And it just kind of led into the rest of the trip. We were constantly singing after that. We were singing songs in English and they would sing them back in Spanish or they would come up with, you know, say, oh, do you know this one in English and sing it. And we would sing it back. Whoever had a guitar was strumming it and we were singing when we were playing Frisbee. We were singing in the line at the airport. It was awesome to praise God. Our time in Peru has been incredible. The Lord has been at work in many ways from his perfect timing to the openness of the people. In the months leading up to the mission, we prayed that we might be able to minister to the people of Peru. The Lord spoke to us through Build It Clean, that he would give us a heart for the people. I've given you giftings. Those giftings will flow. I will lead you on a plain path. I will guide your steps. Watch for me. I have a heart for people. I will give you a heart for the people that you see, that you touch, that you serve. I will give you a heart for the people. I love being with the people, talking with the people, trying to talk with the people. Um, I found myself crying over the fact of leaving um, these people who I had made fast friends with. The people were really receptive and opened their hearts to us. To come into their world and be a part of their Peruvian culture and just their life. After one of the, the family conferences, there was a group of us and we were talking to, to a bunch of different girls um, from Peru and one of them knew a little English and I used my little bit of Spanish and we were we were having conversations and you know there'd be times we didn't know what we were saying and then once we figured out everyone was like oh yay you know because we figured out what we were trying to say and it was just awesome. It's amazing to see how the Lord is working in people's lives here. But the most significant thing for me on this trip was when I met a lady when our van broke down we were driving through this little mountain village. We came across a lady who was 85 years old now. Her name was Theodora. I found her uh, sitting in the sun in the front of her home, in the doorway, reading her Bible. She told us that when she was just a child, she went to school for a couple of years only before she had to go back and work on the farm. But in that time she learned how to read and somebody gave her a Bible. So I went to speak with her and I asked one of our, uh, I asked uh, Rebecca to translate for us and all she could do was praise God and thank God talk about Jesus that was such a blessing she has all of her children who are following the Lord and she's been able to share the gospel in this little bitty village on the side of a mountain indeed Theodora was one of those that are the salt of the earth those beautiful hands on that scripture spoke greatly to my heart seeing the unity of the body of Christ no matter what country you're from or what language you speak was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I'll be seeing Theodora uh, with the Lord one day. Amazing. Awesome. Amazing. Incredible. Totally. Amazing. Spectacular. Gorgeous. One aspect that the Lord had showed me, uh, even through uh, Gary speaking even before coming down there, was the aspect of being flexible. You never really know what's going to happen next, which makes it an adventure. It's a lot different coming from United States and having things planned out. The other thing that really spoke to me was just how much God sent me here without really being prepared and totally just saying, you know what, I'm going to work in spite of you. It's encouraged me to be more intentional in looking for ways that I might minister to Christ in my own community day by day. It's easy when we're out somewhere new to think about that all the time, but when you're in your day-to-day -day life at your home, it is also important to be a witness. One thing that really in encouraged me or was a great blessing on this trip were a lot of the conversations that we had with Gary. Conversations that ranged from theology to a deeper understanding of Peruvian culture. I very much enjoyed listening to Pastor Tubby speak. I learned that one purpose of a mission trip can be to encourage the missionary out on the field. For one, we saw the uh, challenges that he faces. We met some of the people that he works with and that will help us when we are trying to pray for him. Peru is a country in transition. It's been in transition ever since the Incas took it over, and then the Spanish took it over. Right now their culture is changing. They're trying to find their identity, and they're very open to the gospel. They've had as many as five presidents in a four-year period of time because they're trying to consolidate the culture of some 40 different Indian tribes and then impose upon it the rule that the Spanish brought. Peru hasn't yet shaped their national identity, and I think that they're going to. 
And Christians can be that identity. Uh, it's not that we're coming in to change their culture, but their culture is changing. It'll continue to change. It's a country in transition. And we need to help them find Christian roots to all of this change, not for empire building, but for kingdom of God building. Peru is at the prime time to be impacted for God. Since the beginning of time, people have been living and working, being born and dying all over the world. And even though we have different cultures and we speak different languages, we're very much the same with the same problems, with the same need for a living God. Our trip to Peru may be over, but our mission has just begun. Thank you.